Today I'm going to show you how to turn a piece of PowerShell script into a working Windows service, aka so that it can start up when Windows does, in under four minutes. So first of all I'm going to tell you that I've got some prerequisites. So I've already got Universal Dashboard installed because I'm going to use Universal Dashboard as my example. And I've created an API which we're going to quickly test just to show that the API works. So what we've got is a simple API endpoint that returns a couple of test values. Obviously, if you are doing a script, it could be more complicated or it could be something else entirely. This is just the example I'm using. So now that I've got a piece of running code, what I want to do is turn that into a Windows service. Now I'm going to do that using several pieces of software. One of them is Chocolatey, because I'm going to use Chocolatey first of all to do the install of another program. And in this case, the program's called NSSM, which stands for Non-Sucking Service Manager. Now, I think someone's making a bit of a poke at how difficult it is to create Windows services, but in fairness, I can understand that. So once the chocolatey package is installed, it basically copies that executable into a directory, and it spits out in the installation process the, what that directory is. So in this case, it's the program's data, chocolatey, LB, and NMS. Ah, that's a mouthful. Anyway, as you can see in the directory, you have an executable that can be used. Now what we're going to do is use that executable to create the service. So before I do that, I've now got to actually create the script that I'm going to be turning into a service. So I've created a new directory, which is going to store my script. I take my script and I'm piping that into a file and just create the file. So what I should now have is a dashboard.ps1. As you can see, we have a dashboard ps1 which allows me to now go ahead and turn that ps1 file into a service so this is where it gets relatively straightforward and fun at the same time we're simply going to run the executable with the install give the name of a service name uh, powershell.exe which is what we're going to call uh, once the service starts and we're going to go ahead and then point that at the file that we created earlier so i'm just going to change the name to make it slightly closer fitting so I put it the service on port 8080 so I'm just going to make sure that it's on 8080. Now if I get the service I should be able to see the current service state. Now by default it's not started after it's created so we should see it as just in a state of um, stopped which is normal that's fine you know no problem there. So we're going ahead and just start the service straightforward enough input the name and start the service. Now once it's started we're obviously going to test to confirm that this is now functioning. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do a quick uh, command line test again. We'll do an invoke web to check that on port 8080 we actually get a response. So I'm too lazy to type this out so I'm just going to tab up until I find the previous command. And there we go an invoke web and we should be able to get a response. First time is always the slowest and we're done. We've created a Windows service and we get a response from it. Um, I guess I have to show you the services just to make sure that it's not just all command line trickery here. So if I uh, go ahead, there's our REST service and it's running and we have a status. And if you check the executable, you'll see that it's the nssm.exe that's firing this off. And, and that's that. That's, that's how straightforward it is. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you didn't, well, you also know what to do, and hopefully see you in the next one.